Hi, my name is Dylan Sullivan. I am a data analytics consultant with Blue Margin, and I'm going to be walking you through a dashboard for Summit Property Group. This dashboard is to showcase some of the capabilities that we've been able to put together for a property investment group, and we will just dive right in. All right, so starting at the top, this first page here is a financial scorecard designed around multifamily units with the capability of looking at multiple different uh, key performance indicators as well as being able to compare them across a couple of different metrics. So if we start at the top left, we can see like we have total revenue, operating expenses, net operating income, different capital expenditures, and then a net cash flow after debt service KPIs. It's just big, bold numbers that we can look at pretty quickly off the bat to kind of get a, a good pulse of how the business is doing. One of the fantastic things about this particular report is that this is actually built in a very dynamic way that we can adjust these two visuals down here at the bottom uh, into a couple of different methods depending on which angle we want to look at things. So starting up, we can look at things from a total revenue perspective, and it's as easy as clicking this button here. We'll see that this updates here to total revenue, and then if we wanted to flip over to operating expenses, we can click here, and we'll see this all update pretty quickly for us to be able to see that, that data at a different lens. The same is said for net operating income, capital expenditures, and then net cash flow as well. And we'll see that we can actually see like quite a few different changes happening across the these visuals down here with a couple of different insights that we can look into. So one that we can actually see here is with the net cash flow, we can see that California is a little under the mark than we would expect. We can actually click on California here and it'll dynamically update everything on the screen. So we can just narrow in and look specifically at California or maybe we wanted to take a look at Colorado. We can also do that as well, kind of see how that net cash flow is moving for us. And then we'll also see that against the prior year, we can see the difference there. So the prior year being negative 8.5 million, current period is negative 6.6. .6, so it's about a $2 million difference. So increased numbers by about 23%. It gives us a pretty quick pulse check on how things are moving across the board. And then of course, if we wanted to just take a look back at that 10,000 foot view, we can go back to total revenue, see everything update here and then can't maintain that great functionality of being able to drill into individual states here. Another cool functionality is that we can actually drill down into a state and see the different properties that would be within a state. So if we wanted to look at Colorado, for instance, based on total revenue, if we click this button here, click on Colorado, we'll see all of the properties that exist within the Colorado state. And so this also maintains that great drill down functionality where we can click on an individual property. Oh, I'm still trying to drill down. Click on an individual property here and we'll see it actually update this metric over here or this visual. And then it'll update all of these KPIs across the top as well. Say if you wanted to particularly look at an individual property and you wanted to maintain that filtering functionality, we can also do that as well. So you can individually select specific properties. So in this case, if we wanted to do that and we're, say we're already this far in, we've adjusted some things, looked at different lenses, and we wanted to reset this, we can quickly go up here, click on this button here, go ahead and hit reset. It'll take it a second. And then it'll refresh the page and bring us right back to square one where we were looking at that 10,000 foot view. And then we can take a look, filter down to one individual property. So say we look at Birchwood Gardens here. We'll see it's in Arizona. And we will see all of the KPIs updating across the board with the total revenue here as well. We have similar filtering functionalities across multiple different dimensions here. So property, property manager, an asset manager, or an individual state, as well as a specific filtering capability on this page, which is a year over year versus a budget comparison. So if we wanted to flip everything to the budget look, we can do that just as easily the click of a button. Then turning it back to year over year. Now we'll actually jump to a couple of the other pages that we have in this particular reporting suite here. 
<laughs> the next page would be revenue analysis. So this page is gonna give us a great insight into the total revenue across a couple of different lenses. And then just to give us a little bit more screen space, we can hide these pages here, and then hide these filters, just so that way we can look at everything as clearly as we can. We've got a lot of great uh, insight here looking at total revenue on a overall and a per unit basis. And we can flip between those two very, very easily just with a click of a button. And we'll see which one that we're actively looking at based on the highlight here. So overall, this is how we're looking as a total revenue versus prior year. And so we'll see like this little area here says budget versus prior year. This gives you that call out as to what that is actually looking at with that, that dotted line there. And then if you wanna hover over that, you can also see those individual like down to the dollar amount uh, values for each individual month. Across the top, we also have some great KPIs, very similar to that first page that we were looking at, uh, with a little bit more of a of a revenue and income perspective, um, allowing us to see more. So, what's going on on that aspect of things? We also have the ability to, as well, if we wanted to look at things from a per unit basis, and then say we wanted to zone in on California because we were taking a look and saw that California was kind of little off the mark. Let's take a look, see how things are looking. So overall, we can see the total revenue per unit is moving pretty well. That's above budget, but then later in the year, we can see we're pretty pretty close to budget, kind of keeping within those, those marks there. But overall, against the prior year, we're doing pretty good. Things are moving in the right direction. We see a lot of green across the board here. We can look into different revenue de details and categories and then look at different revenue variances against the prior year. So if we wanted to look at some of those variances here, we can see these right here are the individual locations. So if we wanted to look at Silver Lake Estates, we can select that. We'll see everything update here. So we can see how those actuals are doing. And then it looks like uh, we just generated a budget for it based on October of 2024. So we don't have any prior budget history and we can see that dropping off there. Seeing a little bit more detail here, revenue variance to prior year, drill into some of these metrics as well. So then we can drill up. We can see a little bit of capability here. So we can see like total com commercial income, total utility incomes, starting to see some of those variances here. So gross, potential rent, net of concessions. We see that's a pretty high statement there. And we can see some other write-offs and other aspects there. If we wanna drill down to that next level in the hierarchy, just click of a button, we're already right back to it. All right, now we're gonna go take a look at the third page as well where we have our move out analysis. This particular page is great for taking a look at like the longevity and the various move out reasons across multiple different aspects of multifamily units, seeing what the commonalities are around recent move outs or um, individual areas of opportunity for mitigating those, those causes. So one example would be if we wanted to look in and see uh, like which locations the rent was too high, if that was the issue, we can actually click into that and see that 6.6% .6 of the move outs were because rent was too high. We can drill into that and see further detail about what's going on there and see exactly when it was happening and compare that against the prior year. So as we look here, we can see we're doing a lot better than last year, uh, especially in the month of June. And so that could be a very good indication of maybe we're starting to align rents to more so the market demand and looking further into like uh, the various reasons associated with that. Or on the flip side of that, there also could be the case where um, maybe rents aren't being pushed as well as they could be and looking into those particular aspects of where there's some opportunity for growth in the income and revenue perspective of the company. So let's go ahead and unfilter from there. We can take a look and see how many were dissatisfied with home and amenities, and we can also see which ones were the largest culprits of that. So if we look at the move outs, uh, in this particular case, it's looking at days occupied by property. If we look at the move outs, we can see Golden Grove Villas 
has the most move outs based on 27, which is a good bit higher, almost triple the next closest one. So in that case, we can take a look and see what's going on, click into that, start looking at overall how everything's doing and get some great detail down here about when people moved in, when they moved out, how all, how long they were there, so the total number of days occupied, and get a good insight into that, as well as see the general number of move outs over the entire period. We can see June was a little rough. Uh, average days occupied, which is going up against the prior year, which is great to see, and just give us a great insight there. All right. Moving on from there, we can go ahead and take a look at AR summary. This is going to give us great insight into uh, the accounts receivables and how uh, how collections are going against the prior year. And like, are we getting better at collections? As we can see here, this particular uh, visual is named to give it some great direction. So that way, if someone's jumping into this report, they can see very quickly what is this report telling me, because this like. Ultimately, if you looked at a report that just had some percentages on there, if you weren't the most nuanced in the particular data, you might need a little bit of insight, but this does help immediately get you into the action, allowing you to see what's going on. We do also have info functionalities across all of the pages. So when you click on this little info button here, it'll give you a great breakdown of what's going on here. So are we getting better at collections? What is this intended to show? how much money is still on the table, give us these great, great looks into various key aspects of the business. All right, looking at things from here. So we, if we wanted to take a drill in and look at aspects of, let's take a look at Golden, uh, at Maple Grove Gardens here. We can take a look, see how things are doing. Looks like September was a little rough in terms of collections, so it's a good bit higher than our average. There could be some insight into that and seeing what's going on there. Looks like there's one particular tenant that might be a little troublesome causing those issues there. If we wanted to take it, take a look at Pine Ridge Manor, this one looks a little bit more even across the board, seeing some numbers there. And as always, we are keeping that great uh, filtering functionality allowing us to see individual states and individual locations within those states. So if we wanted to take a look, looks like Texas is our, our best uh, state in terms of AR collections, uh, making sure that we're not leaving money still on the table. And the other cool thing is that we can actually hover over these and these are dynamic and will show the total AR within that period that is still outstanding. So in this particular case, we're looking at Arizona, we can see 1.1 million is still on the table, and we can see what those particular pieces are. So it looks like a lot of that is residential rent, uh, with some half rent, a couple of sewer and utility aspects as well, and there's to look into a little bit further. So say we wanted to look into that, let's take a look at Washington, see what's going on. Cedar Hill Gardens, we can see here pretty quickly. Across the board, it looks like historically we're, we're operating at about a 12 to 10% um, in terms of like current month AR. Or <coughs> you can clean that up a little bit. <clears throat> so looking back at Washington, taking a look, let's take a look at Cedar Hill Gardens. So let's take off that drill down capability and let's just dynamically filter to Cedar Hill. So it looks like Cedar Hill is a little bit higher than what we were looking at with Washington overall. So it looks like we're, we're floating around like the 15% there. So if we take it off, we can take that quick look. Yeah, it looks like roughly 15%. So we can look a little bit closer into that, kind of see what's going on with this detailed area down here and see the total, what of that is rent, and then the other aspects in there, breaking that out into January rent, December, November, and October. Looks like October, there's still quite a bit outstanding that we might want to catch up on. All right, well, that is a quick overview of our Summit Property Group. Uh, property investment group reporting suite. Um, I'd love to give you more detail. If you're interested in seeing more, please click below and uh, look at our website. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.